I hope everyone is doing very well. We're going to look at uh, the heresies of Rome as we were, <clears throat> you know, we were looking at uh, Revelation 16, yes, uh, yes, well, the day before yesterday now. And I wanted to sort of look at how the Antichrist uh, is ruling for these last days. It said Anti Antichrist will rule for 42 months. And then when the Lord comes at second coming, he, his reign will come to an end. It's, it's kind of interesting if we look at <clears throat> some of these lists of heresies. Because if somebody was to say, why is, the, why is the church bad? Sometimes people might be on the back foot, might not quite have the exact reasons as to why it's wrong. But it says in the book of Revelation, the sins of Mr. Babylon have piled up to heaven. So if we think about the Roman church, I'll probably go into this one first. This is a list of popes on Wikipedia. Now you get to the 10th pope, who was called Pius I. So this is 140 to 155. He was um, Bishop of Rome for 15 years, 181 days. And we can see he reigned uh, sorry he uh, he was a Roman citizen uh, he's he's falsely credited with being the brother of the author of the Shepherd of Hermas which is it's crazy that, that's not it's not correct so it says this is interesting here at the bottom. It says he was, uh, it says he was martyred here, but whatever. But it says he decreed, decreed that Easter should only be celebrated on a Sunday. So what they're calling Easter there, they means, <clears throat> they mean the Passover. They mean the Passover. It, it wasn't called Easter at this point. It's, this Easter came on it. At the time of the 325 AD Council of Nicaea. So, what if you're unsure as to what this means? The Passover has a rolling date. Um, if you were to do it properly, it would be on Abib or Nisan 14, which is 14 moons after the spring equinox. So, it's a changeable day, a bit like somebody's birthday. Now, <clears throat> What the Roman Church did from, we can see, from the reign of Pius the first to this very day. So we, we're talking, you know, from 155 AD. They put it on the Sunday following the 14th moon. So it's always got to be on a Sunday. Why is it got to be on a Sunday? It's because that's the pagan that's the pagan worship of the Romans. So if we go into the list of the heresies of the Roman Church, we've got dates here on the on the on the right and the heresy in the, the column. It says uh, the most ancient heresies are prayers for the dead and the sign of the cross. They've got this as 310. Then we've got candles introduced into the church, 320. This might not seem such a bad thing to a lot of people, but I know for a fact this is linked to sun worship. This is a pagan observance lighting candles. I was in an assembly uh, for my daughter. I was kind of pushed. I had to go and pick her up from school, and I had to. They, they were doing an assembly. It was a Church of England school, and I took her out of this school based off of this assembly. Because I'd already banned her from going to the Church of England church to do the services. And they were lighting candles in front of a, a metal crucifix uh, with the Bible open. And my spirit was going, red alert, red alert, get out, get out. So this is a real bad pagan observance with lighting of candles. 320. Veneration of angels and dead saints, 375. The Mass, 394. So there's something to do with mass that it's supposed to be like this regular ongoing sacrifice. I would have to go into it 
it, 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 it conflicts with this idea that Christ was the one sacrifice that put away all sacrifices. I need to look, look into that again. Okay, three, uh, four, three, one, the worship of Mary. So what they were doing was uh, they, had, they would have these councils, like uh, they 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 uh, had this idea that they were continuing this idea of the first council of Jerusalem, and so they would have second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh councils. So I can't remember the particular council, but I do remember this this idea of Theotokos, where they say that she's the mother of God, and this is where their Trinity theology kind of starts to make sense within their heresy that if they make Jesus the same as God the Father, they can say then that uh, Mary was uh, Theotokos, which is God-bearer. So, oh, there we go, it's Council of Ephesus. Council of Ephesus. Okay, 500 AD, priests begin to dress, dress different from the laity. Then we have 526, extreme unction. 593, doctrine of purgatory was first established by Gregory the Great. So purgatory is this idea of an in-between place. You're not, you're not fully in hell, um, but you're in this kind of undecided place in between heaven and hell. 600, the Latin language as a language of prayer and worship in churches was imposed by Pope Gregory the First, 600 years after Christ. It says the word of God forbids praying and teaching in an unknown tongue, according to 1 Corinthians 14, 9. 600 AD again, Bible teaches that we pray to God alone in the primitive church, uh, never where prayers directed to Mary or dead saints. This practice began in the Roman church. Okay, it says papacy is of pagan origin. The title of Pope or universal bishop was first given to the Bishop of Rome by the wicked Emperor Phocas. This he did to spite Bishop Syracus, Syracus of Constantinople, who had justly excommunicated him for his having caused the assassination of his predecessor, Emperor Mauritius. Gregory I, then Bishop of Rome, refused the title but his successor, Boniface III, first assumed title Pope. So we know Pope means, uh, like it's in, the, it's in the Spanish or the Latin, Papa, which is father. Jesus did not appoint Peter to the headship of the apostles and forbade any such notion. Not sure about that. He did actually appoint Peter. Um, you had James the Just in Jerusalem, who was over the circumcision, and Peter was... Uh, very much, you know, in, in a prominent role as one of the head of the apostles. There was kind of this, you know, both of those, James and Peter, had had those higher positions. See, this is where I disagree with Protestants here, a lot of some Protestants. It says, note, there is never any mention in scripture or history that Peter was ever in Rome much less that he was Pope there for 25 years. <clears throat> Clement, third bishop of Rome, remarks that there is no real first century evidence that Peter was ever in Rome. So this isn't true. <clears throat> That's totally false. Now, Peter was in Rome. Peter was setting up the Roman church. He, uh, uh, Linus was the first bishop and Clement was the second bishop. So... You know, um, some people can't accept that the Roman Church was a, a, a genuine holy church, but it fell from grace. I mean, that's just what happened. If we look at, as I pointed out, what happened in 150 with changing the Passover, it's just a, a, fall, a fall from grace and a fall into apostasy. Here we go, 709, kissing the Pope's feet. It had began a pagan custom to kiss the feet of emperors. The word of God forbids such practices. So it's a slow integration into the worship of Romans. You know, they fell fast with 325, and then it just seems to be this total uh, conformity to pagan Rome. You know, if you were to understand the vision of Revelation 13 about the second beast, Directs 
the inhabitants of the earth to worship the first beast, it's Papal Rome directing the inhabitants of earth to worship pagan Rome. Temporal power of the Pope. When Pepin, the usurper of the throne of France, descended into Italy, called by Pope Stephen II to war against the Italian Lombards, so they were the Germanics. The Lombards were the Germanics who, who moved in and started to take over larger areas. He defeated them and gave the city of Rome and surrounding territory to the Pope. Okay. Worship of the cross, images and relics was authorised 788. This was by order of Dowager Empress Irene of Constantinople who first caused to pluck the eyes of her own son Constantine VI and then called a church council at the request of Hadrian I, Pope of Rome at that time. So they're saying that idols are coming at this, this point, 788. Idols and the worship of the cross and relics. So, you know, bones of so-called dead saints, skulls, etc. Holy water mixed with a pinch of salt and blessed by the priest authorised 850. Veneration of St. Joseph began 890. Baptism of bells instituted by Pope John 14th, 965. I don't know what the baptism of bells is. Canonization of dead saints. First by Pope John 15th, 995. Fasting on Fridays and during Lent imposed. So it, Lent was never part of the early church. Imposed by popes said to be interested in the commerce of fish. Bull or permit to eat meat. Some authorities say began in the year 700. Fasting on Fridays and during Lent. Mass was developed gradually as a sacrifice. Attendance made obliga obligatory in the 11th century. The Bible teaches that the sacrifice of Christ was offered once and for all and is not to be repeated but only commemorated in the Lord's Supper. Yeah. See, I hadn't read through this before I went into record. That's, that's basically what I thought Mass was. Celebrity of the priesthood was decreed by Pope Hildebrand Boniface VII. This is 1079. So we're coming into the time of the Crusades. Celibacy of the priesthood. Okay, Jesus impo imposed no such rule, nor did any of the apostles. And then it says Peter was married. He was. He had a daughter. And Paul says that bishops were to have wives and children. So, yeah, the uh, this goes into that scripture. Is it to in one of the epistles to Timothy about the doctrine of devils, which is forbidden to... Uh, marry and to abstain from certain foods so we we looked at that with that fasting there on the Fridays during Lent now we have you know the doctrine of devils here some thousand years after the apostles the rosary or prayer beads was introduced by Peter the hermit in the year 1090 copied from Hindus and Mohammedans Islam interesting 1090. I didn't know that, so that's where it came from. Accounting of prayers is a pagan practice and condemned. Okay. Inquisition of heretics was instituted by the Council of Verona in the year 1184. Jesus never taught the use of force to spread his religion. So yeah, the Inquisition, uh, famously the Spanish Inquisition, they would have torture devices. It was to inquire as to whether they were in the church or not. Um, also, you had the um, uh, the Muslims who had conquered Spain. At the time of Ferdinand and Isabella, they did an inquisition to to see if the population was was you know still Catholic. That's basically what they would do. They would go and root out Protestants as well. The sale of indulgence is commonly regarded as a purchase of forgiveness and a permit to indulge in sin. 1190. Christianity, as taught in the Bible, condemned such a traffic and it was 
the protest against this traffic brought on the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century. The dogma of transubstantiation was decreed by Pope Innocent III in the year 1215. By this doctrine, the priest pretends to perform a daily miracle by changing a wafer into the body of Christ, and then he pretends to eat him alive in the presence of people during Mass. Yeah, I do adhere to that. Confession of sin to the priest, again 1215, at least once a year was instituted by Pope Innocent III in the Lateran Council. 1220, the adoration of the wafer, decreed by Pope Honorius. Twelve twenty nine, the Bible forbidden to laymen and placed in the index of forbidden books by the Council of Valencia. That is a big one. Bible forbidden to the layman. You're not allowed to read the Bible. Amazing. 1229. The scapula was invented by Simon Stock, an English monk. It's a piece of brown cloth with the picture of the Virgin and supposed to contain supernatural virtue to protect from all dangers those who wear it on naked skin. Roman Church forbade the cup to the laity by instituting the communion of one kind in the Council of Constance. Forbade the cup, so you can't drink. You can't. You can't then enter into eternal life because he said you have to. You have to drink my blood and eat my flesh to enter into eternal life. Fourteen fourteen. Doctrine of purgatory was proclaimed as a dogma of faith by the Council of Florence. There is not one word in the Bible that would teach the purgatory of priests. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins. That's 1439. The doctrine of seven sacraments affirmed. The Bible says that Christ instituted only two ordinances, baptism and the Lord's Supper. The seven sacraments, 1439. So this was obviously the, the whole reason of the church saying that it, it had authority and you could only enter into heaven through the church because they had the sacraments. Okay, 1508, the Ave Maria, part of the last. It was completed 50 years afterwards and finally approved by Pope Sixtus V at the end of the 16th century. Council of Trent, 1545, declared that tradition is of equal authority with the Bible, so the church tradition. By tradition, it's meant human teachings. The Pharisees believed the same way, and, bit, and Jesus bitterly condemned them, for by teaching human tradition, they've nullified the commandments of God. Uh, Council of Trent, the Council Reformation. The apocryphal books were added to the Bible also, by the Council of Trent. Uh, I don't have a problem with that, 1546. I'm not sure about that. I mean, if it's if it's the Apocrypha, which is like the two Maccabees, the two Ezra books, uh, additions to Ez, Esther, Esdras, like these books were in the Jewish uh, Old Testament that was uh, the, the Sanhedrin approved of, uh, they were in all kinds of different Bibles, uh, the Septuagint, so I have no problem with the Apocrypha. Uh, the Creed of Pope Pius IV was imposed as the official creed 1560 years after Christ and the Apostles. True Christians retain the Holy Scriptures as their creed, hence their creed is 1500 years older than the Creed of the Catholics. The Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Mary was proclaimed by Pope Pius IX, 1834. The Bible states that all men, with the sole exception of Christ, are sinners. Mary herself had need of a saviour. So Mary was a temple virgin. Um, 
she was very young when she conceived and I'm not sure about this one uh, you know Mary wouldn't have been a sinner when she conceived I wouldn't have thought because she was so young as well in the year 1870 after Christ Pope Pius IX proclaimed the dogma of papal infallibility uh, this is a blasphemy and a sign of the apostasy and the Antichrist pres predicted by St. Paul. Okay, I don't, I don't agree with that, saying the number of the beast is, is, equates to this. It's, it's uh, the number of King Solomon, which is the apostasy that Solomon committed. Uh, Pope Pius X, 1907, condemned together with modernism all the discoveries of modern science which are not approved in the church. Uh, 1930, Pius XI condemned the public schools. In the year 1931, Pius XI reaffirmed the doctrine that Mary is the mother of God. And the last one, 1950, uh, the last dogma was proclaimed by Pope Pius XII, the Assumption of the Virgin Mary. So, it's good to go through that, to have a reminder of the heresies of the church because you can you know that it's 10 years now since they came with this new age heresy that all these religions are true which takes you know that takes the apostasy to a whole new level this was based on the jesuits going out to places like china and adopting their false false prophets like confucius and so it's a bit like a warped way of in the bible where paul says to the jews i became a jew to gain the jews so the Jesuits went out and they became all these different pagans to gain the pay, all these different pagans, um, gathering them to Armageddon. So here's how uh, the Roman Catholic Church has been destroying all the nations for a good 1700 years. We've got here the Wheel of the Year. If I read it, the Wheel of the Year is an annual cycle of seasonal festivals observed by a range of modern pagans. Marking the year's chief solar events, solstices and equinoxes, and the midpoints between them. British neo-pagans crafted the Wheel of the Year in the mid-20th mid century, combining the four solar events marked by many European peoples. Well, I don't know what they mean about their crafting in the mid-20th century. This is ancient. I mean, this goes all the way back to after the flood, uh, you know, a circle with a cross in it. Uh, okay, combining the, the four solar events or quarter days marked by many European peoples with the four seasonal festivals cross quarter days celebrated by insular Celtic peoples. Different paths of modern paganism may vary regarding the precise timing of each celebration based on such distinctions as the lunar phase and geographic hemisphere. Okay, so this is how you observe pagan religion. If you look and if you're not familiar with this, it's called the Wheel of the Year, and we have at 12 o'clock we have Yule, and look at the date, 20th to the 23rd of December. And so, what the Roman Catholic Church did by adopting this paganism was it said the birth of Christ was the 25th of December, and so you have this observance of uh, paganism which uh, Roman Emperor Constantine was uh, an observer of the religion of the Romans called Sol Invictus and so it's all sun worship we can see we've got you know, Yule which they say is Christmas then we have uh, we've got Im Imbolc 1st of February uh, then we have Ostara the 22nd of March so what they do is they say Easter is, uh, you know, they're, they're observing the, the, the resurrection of, of Christ, the cross. But it's ultimately, this is why they changed the name to Easter, because Ostara is the root name of Easter. So by calling it Easter or Ostara, you're observing that. You're not observing Passover, even though Passover is measured by this, the same equinox. 14 moons after this spring equinox and so 
this is how the pagans uh, uh, worship their, their their Baal, Baal and Ashtaroth. So, like in in uh, in England, you'll have Yule and Ostara mainly because you know the Protestants backslid and started doing these these dates and damning people. But in the Latin countries, like in Spain, they've got all of them. They do all of them. So you've got op we can see here opposite Yule, which is the winter solstice. This is this is this time here is divided by the six months. So six months after Yule, you come to this date called Litha, which is the 19th to the 23rd June. And so in Spain, the Spanish celebrate John the Baptist uh, because, in a clever way, what they've done is you see they've placed Christ's birth on the 25th of December. But as we know factually in the Bible, John the Baptist was born six months before Christ. And so they say that this is uh, the summer solstice. What's, what's written here is Litha is, is celebrating John the Baptist. And all of these uh, uh, observances, the Roman Catholic Church will observe all of these uh, by calling them under different names. See, so you've got Sam, Sam Hain there, 1st of November. This is the, the pagan New Year. I didn't know this until kind of fairly recently, a couple of years ago maybe. And on the 31st of October, what they call Halloween, the Roman Catholic Church started to call it All Saints Day. And so it was like, this is a, an occult festival and they will, um, you know, do their devil worship. I mean, the whole thing's devil worship, but this Samhain is, is like I said, it's the, it's the end of the pagan year on the 31st. And the first is the beginning of their their pagan year and it runs for 10 days and like in England on uh, the 11th of November they have uh, these observances that they they say you know everybody has to wear a poppy and uh, they fall in people deceiving people into the worship of the dead which is what Samhain is so um, that is kind of it uh, if we look at actually just before I go about the first first Christmas celebration, if you, if you click on it, the first recorded celebration of Christmas, uh, it says in AD 354, um, in an old list of Roman bishops that was compiled, these words appear for 336. The 25th of December, Natus Christus in Bethlehem, Judea. So Christ born in Bethlehem, December 25th. So we can see this is the first recorded celebration of Christmas. AD 336. So anything after 3, 325 AD is, is obviously part of Antichrist and his his apostasy. So if we go here, it says, um, no one knows for sure on what day Christ was born. Dionysius exeduce a 6th century monk who was the first to date all of history from December 25th. Other traditions uh, gave dates as early as mid-November or as late March. How did Christmas come to be celebrated on December 25th? Cultures around the Mediterranean and across Europe observed feasts on and around December 25th, marking the winter solstice. Jews had Festival of Lights. Germans had Yule Festival, like we just got into. Celtic legends connected the solstice with Balder. Scandinavian sun god who was struck down by a mistletoe arrow. At the pagan festival of Saturnalia, Romans feasted and gave gifts to the poor. Drinking was closely connected with these pagan feasts. At some point, a Christian bishop may have adopted the day to keep his people from indulging in the old pagan festival. But either way, these are all the heresies. And these are the things that are, are damning people, as it says in the book of Revelation, about Rome destroying the nations with sorceries and Isaiah 14, 12, the destroyer of the nations. So uh, good to revise. You know, we know these things. We can't be deceived by them.